I'm telling you, you're building your wall wrong. And the reason why I'm telling you you're building your wall wrong is because you'll see the wall behind me right here. Well, we're not going to test this particular wall due to the fact that it's S+, plus and there's a lot of other rules in, in place with this wall behind me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to build a stronger wall. Uh, so many people build their wall in such a way, and there is a much, much better way to build your wall that will actually protect your base better. And I'm going to show you how in this video. Alright guys, so most people build their wall like this. And other people build their wall like this. And there's also a variant to that wall, like this. But there's another way to build a wall, and that's like this. Alright guys, so let's look at your standard behemoth gate wall. Uh, the door is uh, 10,000 plus 2,500, so 12,500. The gate frames here are 20,000. Well, not bad. This portion is tougher, definitely. This portion is also fairly tough compared to your average wall, but it is very expensive. Both pieces cost a lot of resources. And even in the stone tier and other tiers, this can be very expensive to go this route. Granted, I think in stone tier, it's a little cheaper to go the other route, but effectively the same cost. So, what's the problem with this wall? Well, I'll show you. How many rockets does it take to get to the center of your base? Double load. We're going to get a double rocket load, right? Three. Let's just see how far we've done with just three, because I am curious. Hmm. Okay, I thought metal walls had gotten weakened, but apparently not. Four. Five. Oh, wow, we're going to get somewhere here, right? Six, six rocket rounds. That is not bad, honestly. I expected the walls to fall a lot sooner. They lasted longer than I thought they would from a rocket. I don't know what's up with the rocket launcher to not be more effective, but I guess that's what it is. All right, guys, so let's look at your next wall right here. Uh, this is the standard wall we did just try and do this a minute ago, and the video failed, so uh, we're doing it uh, again here. Uh, you can see the fence foundations down here have 10,000 health, and the wall has 10,000 health. How many rocks do you think it'll take to get to the center of this base? Now, when targeting something like this structure, just as well as this one, unlike that one where you could shoot anywhere to hit it, uh, you have to be a little more specific, but no matter what, you can drop an entire section of the wall just by hitting it with a rocket. Well, let's aim for the joint here. One. Two, three, four. Four rockets, not bad, so I think it's going to survive five. Yeah, five rockets. And look at this other wall right here. It's about broken. And the fact that it survived is a bit amazing, but even look at that, not much at all. So, six rockets. And you can see the damage spread, and this, I believe, all came from sharing damage from over here to here. Because we can look at this one right here, and only that last rocket seemed to really do any damage. If it did any prior to, it was not much. And you can see, not only did I blow out the foundations by shooting at that joint where I did, you can see the walls are gone, and everything above it has dropped. So, this is a problem, is it not? I think so, being as your entire wall has now fallen. So this is not a good good wall either. 
All right, let's go to this wall. Now this wall, I'll give you an examination of the wall here. It is a single foundation, a fence foundation wall with pillars in it, which is another design I actually started using eventually. And what it does on top, all right guys, so this is another wall right here. Uh, as you can see, this is the front plate right here, right next to the other one. And then you go right inside here and you can see pillars standing there. What those pillars do basically is provide support for the ceilings, which means you can put turrets on it. This wall is substantially better than this wall, but it's fairly expensive. And unfortunately, it's not going to hold up to its name here very well either. Uh, you can see there's this back wall here because, I mean, if you're putting pillars on it, why not put a back plate also so you're squared up like that? You don't even have to have this section, but we did it anyway. And hopefully it will actually support some of this structure. This should generally be the same. And again, we're aiming for the base. And you might wonder, why are you aiming for the base? Well, if you hit it from the base, it should drop the whole section. Provided that they're not connected, that is. And hopefully we're going to see either that these are connected or that they're not. So we're at four. And surprisingly, something is holding all this up. We did take that out, but you can see this pillar is taking considerable damage. The fence foundation has not seemed to take any. So we're going to go right over here, all right? All right, so by taking out the top and bottom plate, we seem to have knocked it all down. Now, you can see this is holding pretty true and to acknowledge this in in a certain in a certain light this is mainly being held up by art mechanics that are kind of semi-invisible. When structures are about generally about this close, they'll still protect each other and hold each other up, despite anything else that might happen to it. If we demolish this. And you can see, even though it's not level, it's connected somehow, even though it's really not snapped to it. And this is just a principle that I've dis I discovered a long time ago about art. If you do things just right sometimes, you can get these pillars to still support. I mean, even if we knock out the pillars, which we're going to do real quick. I think if we knock out the pillars in this area, the whole thing should fall. So basically, even though the pillar was gone all the way up to here, because that pillar was snapped to these two, they provided a support structure up here. And despite the fact that this was only connected by just touching, not even by an actual snap point, this held the structure up. Now this is not bad, but it's not 100%. I've worked with this uh, method before, and if your structure is too severely changing in height, it doesn't always hold it up. So what you eventually come to is building something similar to this. So not saying that was a bad wall, that was a very good wall, but this is a straight wall, 100% a straight wall. Just like that other one, you have ceilings on top. You can place structures on them, which means you can put turrets to protect the top section of it. But instead of the way the other one was built, we have a bottom to it. And there was another factor behind this one that you can do to this one. This is not a honeycombed wall. I will already state that. This wall does not have the honeycomb done to it. But there are such things called honeycombing where you take ceilings and place them in there, each section, and walls down each one. This keeps rexes and stuff from marching through. Now, on that same note, something like taking this out.
Alright guys, so we have finally blown a hole into the wall, right? Now, the nearby foundation took a little bit of damage. You can see there's a bit of a splash. Unfortunately, I can't even crawl in, so this was actually a mistake, a mistaken hit, and you'd probably want to aim further down the line. Well, this is one positive benefit to all this. They could mistakenly hit the wrong one, and actually, I could probably crawl through, but unfortunately, well, you know what? Let's walk. All right, so I'm in, right? Well, since we're in here, we should do a lot of damage. But you know what hurts real bad when you crawl into something and you're not aware of what would be behind the wall when you blow the foundation out? Not only can you have stacked a ceiling here, which would be a further advancement to the method here, but rather than putting a ceiling here which just protects the innards of the wall, why not just set a couple turrets in here? You can throw a generator here, which powers every turret along the line, uh, and as well as when you're doing the generator in here. The turrets, you can put stage multiple ones throughout for backup power that could even run power maybe back to your base. But the moment they crawl in, they will be shredded. They will have no choice but to slowly tear apart the wall and drain the turrets one by one. Now, you might think, well, that's a lot to put in there. But here's the thing. How many bullets really have to be in these turrets to stop people? Because the only thing that's going to stop these people is having maybe, you don't even need, but maybe five, 600 bullets in these things. Uh, and they'll never try and punch through because they'll lose their armor by the moment they crawl through. And they do not want to die. And if they are dying, they only are going to have a limited number of deaths before you're really going to be able to take advantage of their death. So turrets along inside this wall, never a bad idea. So right off the bat, this is why if you're building with any other structure, you're building it wrong. What else about this structure makes it so good? Well, we dropped the foundation there, right? Let's see if we can drop the top section. All right, so we've dropped an entire section. We took out the foundation, and we took out that. But you can see, uh-oh, there's another wall, just like the previous wall. So you've already got a problem here. You've knocked out a section of the wall, but now you can't get through. So what do you do? Do you fire through? Okay, let's fire through. And let's aim at the joint, too. Let's say we are that accurate. Well, I mean, we could be... We're, we're pretty far away because you're probably not there. You're probably back here. Trying to avoid turret fire. So h hitting the joint up there would be very, very difficult. Alright, guys. So we did blow through. But you can see the ceiling is still standing. It was very hard to hit the ceiling. And I think we did get an extra shot, but it looked like we were hitting the ceiling. Eventually, you could blow the ceiling through, but guess what? Just like this wall, you've only opened a gap long enough to get through. The same setup here, basically, except this one had a pillar holding it up, and then you had a fence foundation. This one had a foundation that you took out, but you still have a ceiling to contend with. This one supports itself by foundations, where turrets will help protect them. Now, you could sit here and destroy every single foundation, but anyone who's ever tried... I mean, you can see from just shooting the foundation, you're going to use a lot of rockets. And the essential point here is the strength of this wall. And that's not the end of it. The only reason why this wall has crumbled the way it has is because we did not honeycomb it. Uh, the term honeycomb basically refers to taking the wall, and we will go ahead... And we're going to use our demo gun real quick. Oh, we don't have any ceilings. There ain't a ceiling laying around anywhere. Well, sure there is. There's one right here. Alright. So the term honeycomb basically refers to taking the walls, putting them there, and... doing this.
and then this. Essentially creating a barrier that if I were to destroy... Alright guys, I hope that helps you out building your walls for future raids, uh, keeping people out. Uh, why you should never use behemoth gates as walls because they're not cheap at all and they are not structurally sound. Uh, why a fence foundation wall is not sound in itself and is very expensive on its own. While cheaper than this, it doesn't really stop any more rockets and you're going to lose a lot of metal when they just take out the bottom sections. Uh, that leaves a gaping hole. This leaves uh, gaping holes once you lose a few, which they could even plant C4 on the bottom. Uh, then you step over to something like this wall or this wall right here. Both these walls are not bad designs. I prefer this one. This one's not bad either, though you cannot honeycomb it. Well, this one you can honeycomb. Um, that wall right there, very expensive compared to the previous walls, but very much more bang for your buck. Your wall is double the strength. Also, no one can get C4 on the top of your wall, which C4 is actually fairly cheaper than rockets. So that's going to save you a lot in that case because they're going to have to fire more rockets, which means they have to have rocket launchers versus the C4 detonator and some C4 that they just threw onto your wall. It also requires them to get close if they can put C4 down versus keeping them at bay with rockets. So a lot of reasons that you should go with this route and maybe put some turrets up. And the same with this one right here, which is just not really possible here. And while maybe possible up there, those turrets are very high up and they really can't protect the bottom too well. And finally, this wall right here, which gives you the option to honeycomb. Uh, this wall is just essentially the best design uh, as far as when you have to build a wall that will last forever. This wall would do it. Now, on that note, if you can go S+, plus, go S+, plus, and then if you can go S+, plus and you've defeated the tech bosses, go build tech half-wall railings. They don't cost, they are the cheapest thing ever. I, I still say this, if you haven't watched my dirt cheap video on how to build a tech base, you really should. But if you have S+, plus, really watch it because you can use the S+, plus versions and you can do something like this. But alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.